All right, welcome to the Video CPA. I'm Michael Scott. I am the Video CPA, and um, on this channel we talk about tax matters and uh, also accounting matters to some extent, but mostly tax matters. It's good to be with you today. Uh, I am a CPA. I'm a CMA as well. That's a certified management accountant. I have a master's degree in accounting and uh, 45 years worth of accounting and tax experience. Uh, so uh, today we're going to be continuing our discussion of 2020 tax changes. That uh, These are changes that have been made, laws have been passed, that affect the uh, uh, tax returns and that you prepare for uh, 2020 and you'll prepare those tax returns in 2021. But um, uh, these are things that you're going to have to take into account. Uh, last time we talked about inflation adjustments. This time we're talking about some actual changes. So you'll see the uh, disclaimer here. If you haven't read that, uh, if you're familiar with this channel, you probably have. Uh, it just says if uh, you click on the comments section of this video and uh, follow a link and buy something, we get a commission. Also, the educational disclaimer uh, basically says we uh, try our best to make things accurate, uh, but uh, you need to review things as well. All right, let's talk about kitty tax. Uh, that's um, basically kitty tax is tax on the income of children that are under 17 years old. If they have income, earned income, uh, they're taxed at their own tax rate, but if they have unearned income, uh, that unearned income has been in the past taxed um, at uh, trust and estate rates, which are very high. Uh, so for the last two years, 18 and 19, they were uh, taxed at uh, trust and estate rates. Prior to that, they were um, taxed at the uh, parents' rate, tax rate. But um, so they've, uh, for 2020, they've changed back again and basically said that if uh, a child has unearned income over a certain threshold, which is $2,200. That amount of income over that threshold is now going to be again taxed at the parent's marginal tax rate, highest marginal tax rate, which uh, um, is still less than uh, generally trust and estate rates. So they change back. So. Um, if you're filing a tax return for 2018 for 2019 still you can take the best of the two whatever comes out best either trust and estate rates or the parents marginal tax rate for 2020 you're going to have to use the parents marginal tax rate which should come out uh, better than the estate and trust uh, rates so that's a uh, pretty big change uh, well it's not a huge change but that is a change in the kitty tax law so if you've got Children that have got uh, quite a bit of unearned income, interest income, dividends in, in income, that type of income, and it's over $2,200 a year, uh, be aware that that has changed. All right, another change, 529 plans. 529 plans are educational plans that uh, uh, people uh, will invest in to uh, have the money when necessary for their kids to go to college. And so, has been some changes in these plans. Um, now you're allowed to withdraw up to ten thousand uh, dollars to uh, repay student debt, and that ten thousand dollars is not an annual figure; that's a uh, lifetime figure. So, ten thousand dollars to repay student loan debt. All right. Now. You can also do that, if you're the beneficiary of the plan, you can also withdraw $10,000 for each one of your sibling or your, or your um, children if they have educational debt. So, but uh, like I say, it's just uh, once in a lifetime. So $10,000 for yourself, $10,000 for each of, your, uh, each of your kids that have student loan debt uh, can be used to pay that debt off. Now they've also expanded the 529 plans to uh, cover certain apprenticeships, which I think is a good idea because uh, a lot of people are are apprenticing these days instead of going to college and they find that uh, that's a better bang for the buck in a lot of cases. So depending on what their degree is. So 
So the only stipulation is that the apprentice program has to be approved by the Department of Labor or by um, your uh, state government. Uh, so make sure that if you uh, are entering an apprentice program and you want to take money out of a 529 plan for that, you need to make sure that it is uh, an approved apprentice program. All right, medical deduction. The uh, base for your out-of-pocket medical expenses now has been changed uh, to 7.5% of AGI from 10% of AGI. And it was 7.5% quite a few years ago and they changed it to 10% and then they allowed seniors uh, over 65 to still keep 7.5% and now they've gone back and said, hey, everybody can uh, have 7.5%. Why they've done this, I don't know, but they increased the standard deduction, so very few people are going to be able to take advantage of this uh, with a standard deduction at 24800 For a married filing jointly in 2020, uh, you know, it's going to be, uh, there are not very many people that are going to itemize their deductions, and if they do, 7.5% of your adjusted gross income is still a hard threshold to make. I mean, you've got to have uh, some major medical to, in order to satisfy uh, for that. So that's been a change. And they've also, uh, we've also got some changes to some uh, tax extenders, which means, uh, a tax extender basically means that some of the laws had uh, sunset uh, uh, dates written into them, and so they've reached their sunset date, and so they need to extend them. And so some of these things have been extended now. Uh, for 2020, uh, your credit for non-business energy property has been reinstated. Uh, the tuition and fees deduction has been extended, and this is the tuition and fees deduction is probably the biggest deduction that you get out of these things. I mean, if you uh, look at the next one, the itemized deduction for MIP, which is your mortgage interest insurance premium, your mortgage insurance premium, which is usually very small. So, I mean, that's not much of a, it's been extended, but had it gone away, I don't know that it would have been noticed that much. And then uh, they've also uh, extended the ex exclusion uh, of cancellation of dead income from a qualified personal residence. So if you defaulted on a qualified personal residence, uh, you will not uh, get a cancellation of debt, a 1099C that you have to pay tax on because that debt was canceled. That's just for qualified personal residences uh, that uh, uh, 1099C still exists for other types of debt. All right, that's it. Those are the ones we're going to cover in this video. So in the next video, then, we'll cover the rest of the changes uh, for 2020 that uh, we know about so far. And uh, subscribe. Hit the button down there. Uh, if you need more about taxes and taxes in more detail, uh, we're starting to build out some of these courses. Uh, we've got about 11 or 12 courses uh, right now out in the uh, Video CPA's Targeted Tax Training. That's at www.thevideocpa.com. So if you want to find out more about some tax subjects, go out there and um, enroll in the school and take some classes. Right now they're free and they are not going to always be free. So um, uh, go ahead and do it uh, if you're interested in that type of thing or interested in becoming a tax preparer. All right, thank you for watching. It's uh, good to have you with us, and um, I'll see you uh, in the next video.